I understand surge condition here is a pressure ratio too high or discharge pressure out of envelope. Uh, I am familiar with turbo core compressors where surge speed is lower speed instead. Why is this difference? Am I missing something? No. Uh, what you are seeing is the surge graph or the surge curve represented in a slightly different way. So in some of the graphs that I've shown in the past, you know, my little homemade one, dep it depends on which graph you're pulling up. So in my graph, I'm showing lift versus flow, but in other graphs, you can see it as actual speed. Okay, so let's pull up an actual turbo core. So this is the SMT tool from turbo core. Uh, and what's being referenced here is the choke speed, actual, and surge speed. And you'll notice the surge speed is lower than the choke speed. And like, okay, so why is that? Well, all of this, like the, the choke and surge uh, values are being based off of this pressure ratio up here, which this is compression ratio, all right? They just reference it as pressure. Uh, so this pressure ratio, which is the difference, the dividing the suction pressure from the discharge pressure. Okay. The ratio between these two gives us our, our, um, where we're at in our surge curve, which is the lift compared to the flow. Now, another way to say flow is speed. All right. So speed is another term we could use instead of saying flow. Um, now, the reason that the surge is lower is because these set points are dictated based off of this ratio. So as this ratio increases, the speed uh, thresholds will increase. And as this ratio decreases, the speed thresholds will decrease. Um, and, and so this will be a constantly fluctuating point based off of this pressure ratio. Now, and I, 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 I don't want to oversimplify this. I'm sure that Dan Foss is probably going a little bit deeper than what I'm actually explaining here, but my, my goal here is to give the basic core concept of how they're dictating what these speeds should be and what these speeds mean in relation to surging. So one of the things that uh, this, why this surge is lower RPM is because if our pr pressure ratio remains the same and constant at 1.7, but we lower our speed too much, then what we have done is we have pushed over into our surge line. So in this particular case, this is another way of representing that, right? So we have lift and then we have flow. So your pressure ratio is on this side, your RPM say down here. So if we're, if we're running at this RPM with, with this lift where we line up right here on the graph and our lift doesn't decrease, but our, we slow down, meaning we have less flow, then we move straight over to this point on the graph. And then we push, I mean, we're beyond what our surge line is. So lower RPM pushes us into a surge, okay? Whereas in the same way, choke, choke is where we, so with the surge condition, we overcome how much lift the compressor can handle which then means that our refrigerant can literally reverse flow and, and backfeed through the impeller. Very, very bad condition, hard on the bearings. Choke, on the other hand, is where we're, we're not actually feeding the compressor to a point where it can, it can keep up. So um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to articulate it better. I, I'm not as proficient as articulating choke as I am some of these others. Uh, so... With choke, essentially the thing I, I think of it as the compressor or the impeller is getting starved. Uh, it's trying to flow more than it can based off of the lift conditions, which creates its own type of um, 
I don't want to say like a cavitate because cavitation is not right, but it creates its own stability issue. I'll say it that way. Um, so in reference to our, um, to our uh, turbo core here. So if we have surge speed, if we lower, if, if the actual speed lowers below this surge speed, meaning that we came over here and we just move straight to the left of this graph without actually reducing lift, which can happen, then we push into a surge state. Uh, versus if we increase speed without adjusting our lift, you know, depending on where we're at here, you know, this is, you just follow the example. If we increase speed without increasing our lift, then we have the potential to push over into a choke condition. So uh, we we have we want to float right in here in this zone between surge and choke. Like this is our happy spot, if you will, and that's what's being represented via these speeds. Uh, we're just doing it in a different way. And that's, that's the thing to keep in mind as to, okay, if you're familiar with the, T, the SMT tool with TurboCore and how these values are, this is just another way of saying flow is how I would represent it. Re, uh, replace speed and RPM with just flow and CFM, and you accomplish the same basic terms with our ratio being just our lift. So instead of saying lift in terms of, say, saturation temperature, so we have 45 degrees of lift. We're using it in terms of ratio and the ratio between suction and discharge. Okay, so the, the, this ratio helps us determine where we are on this actual graph um, over here on the left side. So where we're at here on this graph, where our PM is, like these, it's just two ways of saying the same basic thing uh, is is how I would characterize it. All right. So no, you're not you're not necessarily missing something. It's just a different way of representing the data. Uh, it does go back into having a deeper fundamental understanding of that surge graph and that and what that curve means in relation to the compressor. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it. Right. Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 